Wednesday show. Wednesday show. Wednesday show. Maybe. Hello, everybody. We're coming to you guys live from my condo. Oh. <laughs> oh. Tonight we're going to be talking all about this year's Festival of the Arts. We're going to give people a few seconds here, a minute or two, uh, to log on before we start getting into the the good stuff. While we're waiting, how's everyone doing? You guys doing good? Hopefully. Hopefully everyone's doing well out there. Having a good day. Maybe not. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear me. Or if you're even there. Maybe not. Is it going through? Or are we having technical problems? We might be having technical problems. So it's showing me that we have people watching, but there is zero activity going on here. It's showing people are, but they're not. So we might leave and come back if it's not going through. I don't think it's going through. Oh, there we go. Um, there we go. We got people coming on now. Hopefully. I don't know. I think we're having some technical problems. It's showing we've got lots of people who are watching, but there's no chat activity. There's nothing. Um, Johnny's comment just popped up. I think we're, I think we're going to reboot it. Because there's no confirmation from anyone of whether it's not, I don't think it's working. All right. So, oh, wait, now people are popping up. Yo, howdy. Is it working now for people? Oh, wait, it's working. Okay. <laughs> so, all I wanted to know. It just kept on popping up saying nothing was going on. So I wasn't sure if it was working or not for anyone. But it's working. Hello, hello, hello. Okay. Oi. Right, so let's get this party started. We're going to be doing the 648th episode of the Wednesday show. Today we're going to be talking all about the Epcot International uh, Festival of the Arts, which started this past Friday. So let's get this party started. We're going to start the 648th episode of the Wednesday show in five, four, three, two. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the 648th episode of the Wednesday show. Today is January 19th, 2022, and I'm your host, as always, Brent Dodge. Hello. Today, we're going to be talking all about the Epcot International Festival of the Arts 2022 edition. Okay. Um, but of course, before we get to that, Let's talk about our news for the week. Uh, First off, thank you everyone who's been joining us for our Saturday in the park. If you didn't already know, every single Saturday right here on the From Screening Theme Facebook page, we do a live broadcast from someplace found throughout the Walt Disney World Resort. Make sure you join us every single Saturday at 1 o'clock Eastern Time for that broadcast. This Saturday, it might be a little bit later, but I'm not 100% positive, so just kind of keep on watching the updates for that as well. Um... In addition to that, thank you to everyone who's also been checking out our daily Disney videos over on the YouTube channel. If you guys didn't know, we also we actually hit our 100th video this past week, so we've actually been doing this thing for over 100 days. Um, with that in mind, I would like to give you guys a little announcement. We're going to continue doing our daily videos every single day up until next Thursday. Next Thursday will be the last, I think it's next Thursday, maybe it's next Friday. It might be next Friday. Um, But next week will be our last daily Disney video for a few days. We're going to be taking a small little break because, like I said, it's been over 100 consecutive days of doing daily Disney videos. And I am going to need a break and I've got some people who are coming in town. Um, and I want to give them my undivided attention. It's my my niece and nephew. So uh, we will be taking a break for that purpose. So I apologize in advance 
if you guys look forward to that every day, if you don't, well, <laughs> no loss to you. Um, and also, as always, tonight's show is sponsored by It's All About the Mouse Travel. Ding. Make sure you stop by It's All About the Mouse Travel.com for all of your Disney travel needs. All of their services are absolutely positively 100% free. So make sure you book with them for your next Disney vacation. And if you're on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe. Or if you're on Facebook, don't forget to like um, and follow. It's it does help me go a long way. So thank you everyone who's been doing that. Okay, so let's get this party started. We're gonna talk today all about um let's see here. 648 episodes. Isn't that how long the line was to get the figure like at 648 hours? Eh, just about. Um It, yeah, so the first day it was, I guess we're going right into the figment line. <laughs> I wasn't expecting to go right into the figment line, but that's apparently where we're going straight into. Uh, the first day when I got over there, they said it was a four to five hour wait. And then about an hour later on, I was getting reports that it was a six to seven hour wait. So yeah, it. and then a few days later, um, people were saying two hours are actually right there. Christine's saying two hours. She waited for two hours. Um, I talked to someone who waited two days ago, the last day that they actually had them, and they waited for 10 minutes. <laughs> so uh, jokes on those people who waited for six hours. <laughs> um, I never had any intention to wait for that long. It, popcorn buckets, I'm not, a, I'm not, I enjoy getting a good popcorn bucket. I've got quite a few popcorn buckets here. Actually, right over there, I've got my 50th popcorn bucket. Right there, I've got my Mickey Mouse popcorn bucket. Over there, I've got the Mickey Balloon popcorn bucket. Over there, I've got the Dumbo popcorn bucket. We got a lot of top popcorn buckets. Um, there's actually, I have, when I first moved down here, I used to collect popcorn buckets like crazy. I like every design that was coming out. I was like, I need this design. I need every single design. And now it's like little storage containers for me. So, um, yeah, so I mean, the figment one's cute, but I I don't desperately need it. If I eventually get one, I eventually get one. If I don't, it's not the end of the world for me. So we shall see. I'm glad to see you take breaks every once in a while. I had no intention of taking breaks, and my brother called last week saying that they were officially now going to come down. So when that happened, I said, "Okay, that's my my niece and nephew are." Um, I love them to death and I want to spend as much time with them as possible. And the videos take about two to three hours every single day to go through and edit and film and all that other stuff. So I figure when they're here, I'm taking a break and, and I'm going to spend some time with them. Be a good uncle. Be a good uncle. State Farm is there. Okay. Let's talk about Festival of the Arts. Now this is the fifth year of the Epcot International Festival of the Arts. Look at Figment there. Figment is our official uh, representation or official mascot of the Festival of the Arts. We will be going through talking about what I've seen, what I've experienced. We'll also go through and show you the piece of artwork that I bought today. Ooh, this is the back side of it. Um, we'll go to the front side later on when we get to that part of the show. Uh, but I put it there specifically for the, the reveal later on Ooh, hoo, hoo. all right so this is the fifth year of the epcot international festival of the arts it is my personal favorite uh festival that epcot does epcot also does flower and garden food and wine and then the festival of holidays as well i think all the festivals are well done but there's something about the festival of the arts that i feel like just it, it's made for me like i i'm a creative person and I love the different presentations that they've done in the past. They haven't done any in the last two years because of um, COVID. But I've always loved the presentations. I've always enjoyed the artwork. I've always enjoyed the different displays that they have going on. Um, and there, there's just so much to do, so much to see that they've done throughout the years. And we're going to talk all about all of that right now. All right, so let's start off with, do you guys want to do, should we go by like type of thing or should we go by artwork or i or walk through the park maybe we'll do a walk through the park we'll do a walk through the park um all right so so starting off at the entrance of the park not a lot going on there's the, our entrance sign that's about it um i do have a picture of the entrance sign on here so Let's get that on here as well. Um, 
So when you first walk into the park, you've got obviously the entrance, which we're talking about right now. And then if you go to the right hand side, it is one of my favorite little displays that they do. Oh, where is that picture? Did I, did I get rid of it? I did not get rid of it. Okay. Here's our display. We've got the rainbows there. We've got pigment there. One of my favorite additions that they added this year is they've got these little paint canisters. Um, if you look on the paint canisters, this is a uh, royal purple pigment. There's also things like one little spark. So it's all these different references to the original Journey into Imagination attraction, which I personally love. When you go to the right-hand side while entering into the park, you get to our very first section, which is the expression section. Now, the expression section is one of the areas that I have to do almost every single day when I go to the Festival of the Arts. It is the paint-by-number wall. And I know a lot of people are like, oh, paint-by-number wall. I find it very, very entertaining. And also, by the way, I have last year's guide here as well, which is actually thinner than this year's, which makes sense because, um, yeah. But anyways, actually, no, this is the sixth year. The only reason I know that is because that's a celebrating five years. It is the it is the fifth year of the Broadway series being on every day. The first year that they did it, it was every other, or it was just on the weekends. And it, it stunk because I only work on the weekends, so I never got to watch them until the second year. So when you go through and you do the paint by uh, number wall, they have it so every like four or five days they switch out the picture. So when you get there, you don't know which picture you're going to be drawing or painting. And you go through and you paint, and afterwards they give you a massive bookmark. Well, it's, it's a bookmark. Uh, it's not a massive bookmark. But they give you a bookmark, and the bookmark shows you what picture you will actually be drawing at the end. Right now, today, they were doing a Van Gogh-style Epcot. So you had Spaceship Earth on one, time, or on one side, and then you have like all the different starry nights type of scene going throughout the entire thing, leading up to Spaceship Earth. Overall, a really cool little piece of artwork. And I think it's just one of those cool things because it's hands-on. So you are actually the person who gets to create this specific type of art. Which, that's one of those things that I just love about Festival of the Arts, too, is it's a very hands-on event opposed to things like Flower and Garden or Food and Wine. If you want to do hands-on, you have to spend money there. For this one, there's things that you can do that you don't have to spend money on, which I personally love because I think it makes life a whole lot more entertaining hey man um it just I, I feel like it just makes things a lot more entertaining we can go through now if you are also over by the expression section on the right so if, if you're facing the wall for the expression section behind you there's like some planters behind the planters there is actually a chalk art walk and that is not the chart art walk that is for the professional artist going through but they actually have chalk for you the person who's going to Epcot to go through and make your own drawings. Um, I may or may not have created a little piece of artwork the other day and put down Brent Dad next to it, hoping to get some followers. Uh, <laughs> um, and guess what? I got none. Uh, <laughs> but overall, I I love this little section because there are so many different things for the guests to actually do that are going to be actually hands on things for you to create something and make it more worth your while. Now, when you take a left hand side, when you continue going down the path, we have figment on our left hand side. We have the little bridge that takes us towards uh, the creation shop, the brand new shop that's over at Epcot. When you take a left there, there is a massive wall. Now, this massive wall has it so there's a few different pieces of artwork on there that have to be taken a look at. Um, this is actually different Imagineers have created artwork specifically in honor of the 50th anniversary of the Walt Disney World Resort. I have a, I think I've got a picture. Do I have a picture? It's not on there. It is someplace I've got on my phone. I've got so many different, like, I don't have it. No, it's on my camera. It's not here. All right, so, <laughs> so the 50th anniversary pieces, there are, I believe it's six of them, but don't quote me on that. And it is everything from a comic book, talking about it's all started by a mouse, and then it talks about like the creation of animals. And then it kind of goes through how the 50 years kind of took place, but not in the exact order that they actually took place. Um, 
And then when you go through the different walls, there's one that has like a happy birthday party or a birthday party, not a happy birthday, a birthday party. And there is a patch that hat says happy birthday from the hat box ghost. And it's all these different characters from the haunted mansion there. There's another one that it's like a really cool design, it's like black and white and brownish. Um, and then when you look at that one, it's got several different characters from different famous Disney attractions, everything from the Country Bear Jamboree, Journey to Imagination. Uh, they have the Yeti up there, Remy from Remy's Ratatouille Adventure, and a whole lot more. And then there's other ones that have it. So it's just classic characters inside the park. But there are six, I, I want to say it's six, six different paintings all together. And every single one of them pays tribute in some way, shape, or form to the original park icon. Um, overall, really cool thing. Joe, I know you're just listening, but Matt is wishing a happy birthday to your daughter. And I say the same. Happy birthday, Victoria. Um, let's see here. Loving all the chalk on our side. Of our, yeah, we'll go through a few of those in just a second here as well. Um, so we'll get to it right now because... Then when you go down the main path, that is where the chalk artwork section is. I do have a few pictures from these ones. Now, the really cool thing about the chalk artwork is the fact that every single day you go down here, you will be seeing different pieces of artwork because chalk does not get along with rain very well. And because it does not get along with rain very well, um, you will see different pieces of artwork every single day you're there. If you guys watch my Instagram stories at all, I have been posting a lot of the pictures from there. That's going to be the ones that we're going to show you right now. If it lets me load them. Okay. I have to hold it on so it doesn't disappear. Okay, well, actually, we'll just, we'll, you're going to have about 15 seconds. Um, here's a National Geographic one with the Statue of Liberty. Then the next one up is Tinkerbell. This Lee person is a huge Disney fan. She's actually from Wisconsin. And then our next one there is from Luca. So those are the three of the pictures that I took today of them. Um, but when you go there every single time, you're going to see different artwork there because it is chalk artwork. Now, one of the things that I would love, 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 love to see at some point is I want to see the drawing, the chalk um, art painting that Bert did in Mary Poppins drawn on there as well. In addition to the chalk artwork there, they also have these different things where it is like three-dimensional pieces of artwork. And it's so cool because if you look at it from a certain angle, it looks like it's a three-dimensional chalk artwork coming out at you, which I've always thought, those, those ones have always kind of blown my mind. So that is our chalk artwork section, continuing on our journey into World Showcase. Now, when we get into World Showcase, let's talk about this right now. I'm going to get a drink of water because I feel like I'm talking out really quickly. But maybe I'm not. I don't know. Um, all right, so let's start off by talking about the food. And the reason I want to start off by talking about the food is because I have not had any of the food yet. So I'm not the expert on the food spots. Um, as we've talked about several different times, there is a figment popcorn bucket. There is the figment popcorn bucket right there. Figment premium popcorn. Oh, um, there was a sign today saying that the figment popcorn bucket is sold out. But if you go through, there are several different types of food spots around. There's Pop Eats, mainly featuring the, um, the Figment Popcorn Bucket. I felt really bad for all the other items because I'm sure people wait in that long line and they didn't even like, pay attention to those other items. They just wanted Figment. Uh, the Deconstructed Dish has everything from Deconstructed BLTs, uh, Deconstructed Key Lime Pie. Uh, Deco, uh, Deco Delights has uh, Decadent Chocolate. They've got orange mousse, uh, gourmet, you guys know me, I'm not a big food person, so all this stuff, we're just gonna kinda go through real quickly here. Um, la Art de la Cuisine Française, uh, cream brulee, we have the Encanto Cocina, which I do wanna kinda check out that part because I do love Encanto, and I hope they have something about Bruno, like it'd be cool if the, one of these dishes was like called Bruno, and then the people, every time you would order, they go, we don't talk about Bruno, no, no, no. Um, over there, we have house-made chorizo and potato empanada, a spicy uh, uh, ajaca soup, passion fruit mousse, and then the beverages are a coconut and passion fruit smoothie, non-alcoholic, 
frozen pina colada and passion fruit daiquiri. Um, yeah, it's not that bad, but oh. Uh, <laughs> The, I'm, I'm trying to think. There was one thing that I did see today that I was like, oh, that kind of sounds good. But I'm not a big food person. Like, I'm looking through this stuff. Oh, the Painted Panda. Uh, General Chow's uh, Chicken Shumai. I don't know what Shumai is, though, so that's why I didn't order it. I'm not a food person. If you guys have never been able to tell that from the, the years of, of me doing this show, I, I, don't know, I don't know food at all. Uh, did you get a... Figment and popcorn bucket. I did not. I, I did not want to wait in the long line for it. So, um, and they sold out. Actually, every day that I could have gone over there, um, I was working those days anyway. So, even if I got over there, it, uh, it wouldn't have been worth it. But they gave a spork and said popcorn. <laughs> it was cool. That is kind of cool, actually. Um, Okay, I'll stick with the peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Yes. So funny story. One time I was with my friends. They were down here when their daughter was less than one. And it was a colic baby. So if you guys know anything about colic babies, <laughs> they they like, to, they like to cry a lot. And they went out to dinner. They asked if I could be the first person ever to babysit their child. And I walked around with the child for hours as she just kept on like gasping like just crying uh side note she's like four now and she's like my best friend at least that's, i called my, my friend the other day to say hi and she heard me in the background she's like is that uncle brent and then i talked to her for the whole phone conversation and my friend kept on saying can i talk to uncle brent she's like no we're best friends not you um so, but where was it going with this oh but after they had their dinner, they said, "Well, we'll buy you dinner because you you watched, you know, our daughter." And I said, "Oh yeah, let's go. I said, let's go get some Uncrustables." And the the husband was like, "Really? That's all you want?" I was like, "Yeah, just peanut butter and jelly. Like that's that's the way to do it." And that's what I got. And I think still to this day, they kind of judge me for it. Actually, Joe's wife Chrissy, I don't know if she's watching or not. Um, she also. One time I was with them at the park and I whipped a Uncrustable out of my pocket because sometimes I'll just go to the park with an Uncrustable. They're cheap and they're good. And I'll just buy a box, bring it to the park, take them out. And um, yeah, still to this day, she, is, he, she has judged me constantly about the fact that I just carried around peanut butter and jelly sandwiches in my pocket. Oh, wait, but anyways, that is the food segment. <laughs> That is the food segment. Let's talk a lot about the artwork. And then we're going to go to your questions after we talk about the artwork. And we're going to talk about the Broadway concert series. And then we're going to go to you guys with the uh, questions in the chat room. Because hopefully you guys are throwing some questions out there. If you're not, start throwing questions in there. Because we're going to go to your questions in the next about 10 minutes here. All right. So first off, while you go through, there are different booths that you can go to that actually sell authentic pieces of artwork. Um, there, Do they have a map in here? They might have a map in here, actually, now that I think about it. I was going to go through and try to, like, memorize for every single one of them was. But I feel like it'd be a lot easier if they said, hey, this is where all the booths are. They don't say, "Where, well, hey, this is where all the booths are. So let's kind of go through. So they've got everything from Marvel. There is a Marvel booth now right at the entrance of world showcase inside of uh the disney trader shop and you go in there they got everything from like really really cool really cool or really, really i can't stress this enough it's a really cool picture of captain america with the shield and um mjolnir coming down on thanos so, i have a picture now that i think about it i took a picture of it today because one of my friends saw it and he's asked one what it fully looked like because i just had like a video on my instagram and then he wanted to know how much it was. So it's this picture right here. I think that's a really cool painting picture, what have you. Um, but that is, it's a it's a pretty big print, but it's $89. So some of these pieces of artwork do cost a pretty penny or two. Um, so they have a Marvel booth, they have a Star Wars section. And then when you go through, there are some artists that are not anything Disney related whatsoever. 
uh, you'll go through and it will be things like nature paintings. And those ones I kind of bypass by because I'm not, I, I'm there for the Disney stuff. Um, and then we have things like the Thomas Kincaid collection. I think I might have a picture of the Thomas Kincaid. I might not. Um, I do not. Uh, then you'll have things like this Lonesome Ghost one. I love that Lonesome Ghost one. I think that is such a cool picture. I've always loved the short, the short cartoon Lonesome Ghost, though. So that's one of the main reasons there. Um, and then you have some Thomas Kincaid ones that I absolutely love. They have a brand new, um, there's a brand new Florida one, which is really cool. It's them on the beach. And then off in the distance, you can see um, like Scrooge McDuck in his car. And hey, <laughs> I almost bought it for that reason alone. I there They've released a new Thomas Kincaid pa painting, um, like those wrapped canvases every single year for the last like five festivals. I have two of them. I've got the one right there and the other one's on the other side of the wall over there. Um, the one that's right there is uh, Mickey and Minnie at the movie premiere for Steamboat Willie. And it's all their friends are in the audience. And then Scrooge McDuck is up in the, the balcony. And then around the corner, I have one where it is Mickey, Minnie, Donald, Daisy, Goofy, Pluto, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, Scrooge McDuck, um, all out on the beach. And they're just kind of out there and Scrooge is like has a metal detector and Mickey and Minnie Donald Daisy are playing volleyball. And it's a really, really cute little painting. And every year they kind of come out with more and more of these things. And I do want to point that out is if you go to the festival one year, most likely these different artists that are coming back year after year after year, they are making more and more paintings every single year to kind of have it so they can draw people in to come to their booth because if you bought something last year most likely you might buy something again this year especially if it's the same type type of um style as years in the past that brings us to the picture i got today we'll show one of the other ones um rob kaz is a painter i got one of his pieces of artwork over there i've got another one over there <laughs> i've got a lot of artwork around on the walls um I've always liked his stuff. There's been a few paintings I've really, really liked throughout the years of his. And I have purchased two in the past. I bought another one today. Um, but I follow him on Facebook and he has posted all these different things, uh, different pieces of artwork that is coming out for this year's festival. I think he had 10 new ones, I want to say. There's 10 of them. And every day for 10 days leading up to the festival, he was releasing a different picture on his Facebook of like a preview of what to come. Uh, this was one of them, which I do like that one a lot. I'm not sure if I'm going to buy it or not, because another one that I have of his is Tinkerbell above the Magic Kingdom. So this one kind of would go in pretty well hand in hand with that one. Um, he also had things like Pirates of the Caribbean that he was showing and all these different really cool pieces of artwork that he kept on showcasing on his page. Um, but the second day that he had it, was the picture that I have here. And I, as soon as I saw it, I was like, I need that picture. Because if you guys did not join us last week when we sat here and we talked about uh, the Walt Disney World Marathon Weekend, or if you weren't here in November when we talked about the Wine and Dine Marathon Weekend, or if you've been following us for, for the last 10, 11 years, we've done several, several episodes about Run Disney. And this is a Run Disney uh, piece. This is a, well, let's show it. Oh, I haven't taken the wrapper off yet. I literally took it out of the package right before I started the show. So that's why you can see you guys right here. Look at you. Yay. Um, <laughs> so on his Facebook, he kind of talked about how he's never done a run Disney race. However, he always liked the idea of the run Disney races where you see the different people coming through, uh, crossing the finish line, where the medals afterwards. And he decided he had to do a run Disney piece. So that is the Fab Five crossing the finish line with Spaceship Earth off in the distance. As soon as I saw it, I was like, I need that picture. And now I have that picture. So I'm very excited about that. I'm very excited about that one. Um, when they were announcing different pieces of artwork that they're going to have for this year's festival, and I saw that one immediately, I was like, that's that's the one. That's the one that I need. Um, so I'm very happy that I, that I purchased that one. It will be going over by my run Disney medals. So yeah, yeah, that's exciting. 
Um, in addition to that, there, like I said, there are several different types of artwork that you can find scattered throughout the entire festival. Um, but that's the one that immediately, as soon as I saw that, I was like, that's a Brent Dodge piece. Like that is a Brent Dodge thing. I need that picture and I'm so happy I bought that picture. Okay. So other things that we can find around the festival, there's a few more things that we can talk about. Let's first talk about, let's talk about the characters. So if you guys have been following me for a while, the last few years when it comes to the uh, Epcot International, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I always do a lot of talking about the characters that are scattered throughout the entire festival. That we have little Robin Hood and Little John, along with Skippy from the movie Robin Hood there. Now, these characters have been around since year one. However, a few of them were not around on year one. Um, year one, it actually was just Skippy. There was no Robin Hood. There was no Little John. It was just Skippy there. And he was added along with Peter Pan's shadow the first year. And then eventually, as time would go on, Peter Pan's shadow would still stick around. And, and Skippy would skip around. But Robin Hood and Little John added it as well. Every single year, they do add a few more pieces of artwork around the pavilions. Let's go through and kind of talk about every single pavilion real quick. Um, and if you're curious about what all of them look like, I did release a video on my YouTube channel two days ago, three days ago, somewhere around there. I think it might have been three days ago, maybe even four days ago now. Um, I released the video, and that video went through literally every single one that we could find that is at the festival right now. And I've got a feeling that there's probably one or two other ones that are still hidden around the festival that we just have not seen yet. So in, let's start with Mexico. So in Mexico, you have Dante, the dog from um, Coco, in both his regular form and his spirit guide form as well. Um, the regular form is on one side, the spirit guide is on the other side. So when you go over there, you can see both Dante and Dante. When you get over into Norway, we had the little snogies, those little snowball men from the Frozen Short cartoon, and then they've slowly made their way into canon for um, for uh, Frozen. But you can see those guys up by the restrooms. They're kind of hanging up by the wall. And then if you look at the fireplace that's near the Stave Church and near the, um, the bakery there, you can actually find a little uh, fireplace. Inside that fireplace, we do have Bruni from... Frozen 2 there. Uh, Bruni is a brand new addition this year. He was not there last year. Hi, Bruni. Uh, as we continue on into or around the area, uh, the next spot up is, I'm trying to see if I have any pictures here. Um, the next spot up is going to be, yeah, um, the next spot's going to be uh, China. In China, we have both Little Brother from Mulan, and we also have Mushu and Cricky from Mulan as well. I do not have pictures of those guys. When you go into the African Outpost, you can actually find uh, Shenzi, Banzai, and Ed, the three hyenas from The Lion King. They're up on a wall. Now, in the past, we have been able to see Timon and Pumbaa. They're kind of like stuck in a hole. I'm still trying to find out if we can see them this year. Again, they were not anywhere to be found last year. So I'm crossing my fingers that they are somewhere hidden throughout the festival. But we're just going to have to keep on looking for them right now. Uh, moving over into Germany, we have one Pascal, two Pascal, three Pascals hidden throughout the pavilion. All of them kind of blending with their surroundings. One of them is painting with his tail. He's painting like a little sun, kind of like tangled. Um, over by the Carmel Kitchen, you've got one that is sticking out his tongue and grabbing a piece of popcorn. And then the other one is blending into a sign for the clock shop. Uh, continuing into Italy, we have our brand new piece along with another piece. We'll start with the other. Did I not? I, <laughs> I thought I saved more pictures on my phone, and I did not. Uh, so let's go to the one piece. So the one is Jimmy Cricket. Jimmy Cricket's been around since the first year. Jimmy Cricket, and he's looking off at the wishing star off in the distance. Um, and then in addition to Jimmy Cricket, we do have a brand new one. It is Luca. The Pixar film that came out last year. Here we have Luca and Alberto. And then the cat is right down here. Then right here is a little crab. 
But overall, I always love whenever they add these brand new characters into the area. And I'm extremely happy with Luca because I feel like Luca did not get as much love as it deserved. I think Luca, Luca was a great film. So I'm glad that we have a little bit of Luca love here in the Italy Pavilion. Um, next up is the American Pavilion. I know for a fact, I hope for a fact I have this one. Yeah, I do. Um, that is going to be Amos from the 1953 short cartoon, Ben and Me. If you've never seen the short cartoon, make sure you go check it out. It is about how Amos the Mouse actually helped Ben Franklin create things like electricity and bifocals and um, all the hundreds of other things that Ben Franklin did throughout his lifetime. Uh, none of them would have been possible without Amos the Mouse. So it's a short story all about Amos. And we can see his little mouse hold there along with um, him holding on to a kite with the key attached to it, discovering electricity. Uh, next up, I don't have a picture of this one, I know for sure. It's going to be Duffy along with uh, Tarlino, T -T 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 I don't remember how to say the name, uh, the, his cat friend who's an artist. Uh, it's the two of them. They are using their paw prints to create a hidden Mickey found in the Japan Pavilion. In Morocco, we have one of my favorites every year. I just absolutely love this one. I think it's one of the greatest. It, it, I think it is my favorite one every year. Where is it at? There it is. We have a boo. And one thing I love about this one is the fact that when it looks like he's actually standing on that shelf, that's there year round. And two, it looks like he's actually still in that pot that is also there year round. So I've always loved the Abu one. I just think it's such a great little addition. It blends in with the background so well. Um, well done. Well done, Disney. Heading into our next section is France. France has the most hidden characters out of all of them. Over here we have the three kittens from the Aristocats, Marie, uh, Berlioz, and Toulouse. Um, the three of them are walking on a sign. I'm trying to get comfortable here. <laughs> The three of them are walking up on a thing over by a street sign. Then we also have Lumiere, who has his candles, and he used to be lighting one of the lanterns, lighting one of the lanterns. And then two year, or no, last year, the lantern was removed before the festival. So then they moved Lumiere to a different lantern in the pavilion. And this year they moved him back to where he originally was, but there's still no lantern there. So he's just like there. And it looks like he's trying to light a lantern, but there's no lantern that exists. So I think that's pretty funny. They also used to have Remy and Emile over by the food court. Now, because the Remy's Ratatouille section is open, we now have Remy and Emile here instead. Uh, this is right when you walk into the pavilion. You can find Remy there. Uh, Remy is running up the, the, the uh, I was going to say the tailpipe. This is not a car. And then Emil, he's just out of camera. He's up on the shelf. But when you walk in, it's on the left-hand side there. When you get into the UK, there is Peter Pan's Shadow, which we talked about earlier. And then there's this one, that which we showed you earlier, with Robin Hood, Little John, and Skippy. And then the final one is the one that I've killed before. It is Coda from Brother Bear. He is found over in the Canada Pavilion. Like I said, these are subject to change. They do change quite often. And I have a feeling that I'm probably missing one or two characters this year. And um, today I, I kind of looked around, but I didn't look around enough to really make it worth my while. But I will be going through more and more times to the uh, festival to try to find all the characters. Because I'm sure that there's at least one or two more new characters that I have not found yet. And possibly no one's found yet. I remember there was one last year. I can't think of which one it was. But there was a character that was added last year. And... I found it on the first day or maybe it was the second day of the festival. I took a picture. I posted on Instagram and no one else posted it for like two or three weeks. Like I feel like no one could find where it was. I can't think of which character it was now though. Um, but overall, those are the things going around the festival. Our final thing we want to talk about before we get to your questions. I think people are sending questions in maybe oh. um, is talking about the entertainment now, they don't just concentrate on the entertainment or on the, the fact that art is a painting or a picture or whatnot. They also focus on the fact that art can also be music. It can be uh, uh, performances, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So when you are first entering into World Showcase, there is a stage there. 
that stage has different musical artists constantly being changed out and showing constantly different types of acts. Overall, it's worth going through. I've gone through there a few times. Every single time I've seen a different act going on. So um, check that out. But then the big one that I always love to point out to people is the Broadway series. I'm trying to think of the official name of it. Disney on Broadway concert series. So today it was Carrie Butler and Telly Loon. Now, Carrie Butler was from Beauty and the Beast. She played Belle in Beauty and the Beast. And Telly was one of the Aladdins. He was the second Aladdin for Aladdin on Broadway. Every single day, they have, it's not always the same people. They kind of switch it up a lot. So Ariel Jacobs from Aladdin and Adam Jacobs from Aladdin were both there yesterday, tomorrow. They'll be there tomorrow. <laughs> um, Heidi Blickenhoff from Freaky Friday and Little Mermaid and Robert Creighton from Frozen will be there in the coming up weeks. Kara Lindsay from Newsies and Dan DeLuca from Newsies are going to be there. Ashley Brown and John Strickland, I've seen them multiple times. I feel like every time I go, I don't plan on whoever ever I'm going to go see because I've only seen Mary Poppins on Broadway ever. But every year I try to go to two or three of these showings and every single time. It's Ashley Brown and Josh Strickland, except for today. Today was the first time I got someone new. Um, and then Kissy Simmons and Michael James Scott. Kissy Simmons from Lion King, Michael J. Scott, uh, Michael J. Scott, Michael Scott. Um, that guy's name is Michael Scott. Holy cow. But Michael Gary Scott is from The Office. Michael James Scott is from Aladdin. And then on the very last day, they have Ashley Brown, Josh Strickland, Kissy Simmons, and Michael James Scott doing a grand finale of the festival. So if you guys have never seen this before, I will be having a full show of it on my youtube channel tomorrow i filmed one today um hopefully it came out well i haven't looked at any of the footage yet but essentially what they do is they bring two different people who have performed on broadway under the disney label and they go through and perform multiple different disney songs so today it was one of the people who played bell and it was also one of the guys who played aladdin they went through and they sang songs from high school musical not this High School Musical on Broadway. They also sang songs from Little Mermaid. They also sang songs from Beauty and the Beast, songs from Aladdin. And then they actually finished up with Hercules, which isn't even on Broadway yet, um, but is is in the production of being so. So overall, really cool experience. If you've never seen it, if you're a big fan of Disney music, it's a very unique way to listen to Disney music, um, especially from like people who are actual Broadway performers like these are actual Broadway stars that are there um, I was looking through the different like playbook about the two <laughs> uh, beforehand and both of them have been nominated in some way shape or form for different Broadway works N neither one of them for I don't think either I know she wasn't for Belle but I don't think he was Aladdin or I don't think he was nominated for Aladdin so all right let's continue on let's go to your questions here because we have some times to go through i mean it was a peanut butter jelly sandwich in your pocket yeah well that's delicious though um it would be pretty amazing if you were able to pull a no way jose out of your pocket that would be the dream that would be the absolute dream i really like Derry larry dotson love his haunted mansion series i think marlene you and i were at the park one time and and he was there and we went in there to check out some of his stuff right was that larry dotson or was that someone else i'm trying to think who I feel like that might have been someone else. Um, who's the guy who's got like the... Um, the like the white the white frames. I can't remember his name. <laughs> I don't remember. But I know you and I were there. How many vendors are there? There are several different vendors. There's probably about 20 different booths around World Showcase where you can buy different pieces of artwork. In addition to that, if you go to like Art of Disney, they have stuff there. Some of the shops have artwork featured in there as well. Um, they have like the Wyland Galleries, which you can find, or you used to be able to find a Polynesian, not anymore. It is currently over at the Boardwalk. Um, you can find things like from their gallery is found over by Test Track as well. So it's not just all in World Showcase. There are things in uh, the other sections of the park as well. So lots of different vendors, lots of different opportunities to go broke. So... Oh, 
yes, let's talk about this. So today, I got to watch this for the first time. I saw a picture the other day online. If you've ever seen Beacons of Light, which is one of the coolest things that they've done with, um, I think it's one of the coolest little additions that they've added to the parks for the 50th anniversary. Someone posted a picture similar to this with the rainbow on there. And then I saw a few other people posting about it. And then today I went over there and I saw it in person. I didn't realize the rainbow connection was going to be happening. I just, I thought it was like, oh, like you see a rainbow on there at one point because it's the Festival of the Arts. And then Kermit the Frog comes on. He starts singing. And I started getting teary-eyed because I love Kermit the Frog. I, I'm a huge Muppet fan. Um, have been for years before Disney bought the Muppets. I was obsessed with the Muppets when I was younger. Um, but I'm a huge Kermit the Frog fan, and I love Rainbow Connection. I think Rainbow Connection is one of the greatest songs of all time. And so here we go. Let's see. Is this my... I'm just holding off, waiting to see. Look, this is my Instagram story. All right, so you keep on going through. All right. You'll hear my my reaction to it here. See, so the script on the side is changing colors. That's me taking my pictures. I think that's so cool. So yeah, they go through, they they sing the songs. I freaked out. I thought it was one of the greatest additions that that they could have added to the Beacons of Light. Um, I seriously, I was I was freaking out big time. I had I had to come home to get ready for the show, and I had to eat because I hadn't had anything to eat yet today. So I was like, oh, do I sit around and wait for the next one? Or do I go home? I literally stood there for about five minutes debating. And then I decided the best that was to go home. And then uh, just call out sick for the rest of the time. Because I, I only work nights. And unfortunately, I can't see that during the day. So I'm going to have to try to figure out where I can go to see it. Are there flowers and gardens? There are not. There, there are some flowers. Some gardens. I guess there are. Uh, have a good night, Matt. Oh, the, I completely forget. It's okay, Eric. Don Ducky Williams will be there this weekend. I did see that. Um, I saw a video, and it, it really it blew my mind. I Okay, so I, I told this story on my Instagram story, but about 15 years ago, I think it, it might have even been on my college program, so close to 20 years ago, which is scary, uh, 18 years ago. I was talking to someone and they said, if you could watch one artist and have them perform one song, which musical artist would it be and what song would it be? And my answer immediately was Kermit the Frog, Rainbow Connection. Like that, I think that would just be the coolest thing in the world to see. And at the 2009 D23 Expo, I saw Kermit the Frog along with all the other Muppets. They came out on stage and they performed Rainbow Connection. And it blew my mind. Like it was one of the coolest experiences ever. It was literally like, like they had like Miley Cyrus had just performed her song "Decline," which hadn't been released yet. They're like, oh, we have Miley Cyrus. She's going to come out and she's going to perform a brand new song for her brand new movie. No one's ever heard this before. You're the first people ever. And I was like, oh, this is cool. And then also like, you know, Kermit the Frog comes. I'm like, oh my gosh, get out of here, Miley Cyrus. This is way cooler. And they had. Uh, the Muppets, and they were all up on stage in a ferry boat, and they they uh, performed Rainbow Connection. And still to this day, I think it was like the coolest concert experience I could have ever anticipated. And I am so, so, so excited 
that uh that happened remember so that's it. yep yeah it was just that was the coolest mind-blowing thing i am so happy i saw that at one point in my life but now every time i start to hear rainbow connection and kermit the frog singing it 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 takes me back to that moment so today when i was watching it that's what it took me back to i was like oh my gosh like that was just such a cool experience and i absolutely love it i still love it it's been 13 years and i still vividly remember it like it was yesterday all right let's see any more questions we we need a few more questions here otherwise we're going to wrap up the show a little bit earlier what muppets came to london a couple of years ago and did a whole show i cried through rainbow connection it was just beautiful and that's the thing i just there's something about rainbow connection being sung by the muppets that just unbelievable I, it's, it's tough to put into words how cool it is and how much it means to someone who one grows up with the muppets and then two uh seeing kermit the frog on stage performing that oh, dreams come true let me tell you dreams do come true in new orleans okay <clears throat> have you seen any orange bird art i saw one piece of the orange bird art found at one of the booths closer to canada and I can't think, um, I, I, I think it was just the one. Orange Bird needs a little bit more love, though. I think some Orange Bird art would be really cool. I think they're trying to avoid it because I think they want Figment to be the true star of this festival. When you throw the Orange Bird in there, sometimes it's, uh, it's tricky. What other merchandise did you get? Right now, the only merchandise I bought was this painting right here um i will i ugh, i'll be getting more art i know i will <laughs> there's two other ones that i have my eye on um so if you guys want to help me purchase become a patreon pal uh, <laughs> but right now yeah right now it's just been the one piece that i bought i will also do the the uh figment painting search and find i'll probably be doing that sometime over the next few days here and uh turning that into a crazy challenge video and then kind of going from there as well so we'll see i'm look at this though i think that's great i am kind of judging goofy because it looks like he's just running his jeans probably not the best idea oh i absolutely love that piece i think that's such a good piece i'll probably post that later on on my instagram with my medals from this past weekend and then take the artist and maybe he'll retweet it hey, hey, or reshare it on his instagram i think that's such a cool piece though uh the expo for the princesses was 2011. although i think the muppet sings that one too i think yeah the muppet sang both of them pretty sure they sang both i'm like 99 percent positive they sang both I love the Tower of Terror one. The Tower of Terror piece of artwork, Orange Bird. The Orange Bird Tower of Terror. <laughs> Be a good movie. They should do a Muppet Tower of Terror movie. Because that Haunted Mansion one was so great. That was just one of the greatest shows that they've ever done. Oh, wait. Any other questions out there? Let's check our subscribers. Because we were doing that a few weeks ago. And we have not, we have not done that. I don't think we did it last week either for the show. Okay. Oh, with making me mean. That's in the uh, Greg McAuliffe section. Another guy who's got great artwork. I got one piece of his, um, not the painting. I got the uh, the print of his with uh, Donald pulling Mickey and Minnie in front of Expedition Everest because it cracks me up. All right, this is our current subscriber total. What? 1,361 subscribers. So keep spreading the word. Uh, we are currently up 60, 60 subscribers? Yeah. 58 subscribers. 59. 59 subscribers for the year. So keep spreading the word. Keep sharing. Uh, keep watching the videos. Keep liking the videos. All the other fun stuff. It truly does help out a lot. And it helps me get, and, and like, so 
I had someone who asked me the other day <clears throat> for my job. They said, so are you making like millions of dollars off of YouTube? I'm like, not yet. <laughs> um, but I, I'll make, so like the video from today, the one that came out today, I won't make a penny off of because the music's copyrighted that's playing in the background, which is fine. Um, because I just like to bring a few minutes of joy from Walt Disney World for people too. Like it's not all about the money. It's all about sharing stuff with, from Disney. Um, the one for tomorrow, because it's the people singing, most likely there's no way I'll get money. But I think it's such a good show that I'll probably personally watch it like 50 times just because I think it's such a good entertaining show to watch. So keep spreading the word. Keep spreading the word. I'm not a millionaire from this. Will you ever TikTok? I have a TikTok. Uh, I've only posted two things ever on TikTok. I do not like TikTok at all. I absolutely despise TikTok. Um, so I actually, I, I posted the two things and then like a week later, I was like, this is stupid. <laughs> and I, and I got rid of the app. I don't, I don't, I like pictures. I like, and I'll, I like doing the videos on Instagram, but I don't do them often enough. But the problem with TikTok compared to Instagram is Instagram has a bigger music library where you can use copyrighted music for. So I have used more, I've, I've done more on there because when you go to TikTok, their music library is a lot smaller and they only like, they already give you like the 30 second clip they want you to use for the songs. Um, and for me, it's not funny if I don't have the specific part. So yeah, I, I, I cannot see myself getting back on TikTok anytime in the near future. Um, or if ever again, um, yeah, I'm not sure. Yes. Okay. Eric, you're right. So, yeah. So, 2009, they did the the ferry boat one, and then in 2011, they just did the one for him, and it didn't feature all the Muppets. It just featured a few two of the Muppets. I want to say it was Kermit and Rolf. Henson was inducted in 11, though. You are correct. So, yeah. So they performed in 2009 and 2011. Holy cow! I completely forgot about that. Oh, wait, any other questions before we wrap up this show here? And my goal for right now for YouTube is I want to hit 1,400 subscribers by the end of this sentence. <laughs> uh, no, nah, maybe by next week. We've been averaging between 5 to 10 new subscribers every single day. So as long as we stay at that pace, uh, we will actually get close to hitting my goal of 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year. Um, we need to average 10 subscribers every single day. But I figure we'll start baby steps. 5 to 10 right now, perfect. And then as time goes on, uh, a little bit better. How is the Lego castle going? The Lego castle is coming along pretty well. Here, let me, let me bring it over here and hopefully not drop it and have to start all over. People are probably in the link right now saying, like, don't bring it over then. Don't bring it over. But it's too late. I'm already holding it. Very careful with it. Ooh. I will hide this here. Flew the castle so far. And the castle was my Christmas present, so. Um, it's the front. I finished this part last night. And the thing I really like about this is there's different nods to different Disney films. So there is Tiana and Naveen kissing as frogs, and there's a crown behind them. The princess and the frog. Um, I'm trying to be really careful with this round. Uh, over right here, this is the magic carpet from Aladdin, along with the lamp down there. Then up at the top here, we have a bow and arrow, along with the archery set for Merida. 
Is there any more that are in there right now? Um, that's it for right now. But overall, it's pretty darn good. Um, it's gonna be yay high. It's gonna be it's gonna be a pretty big castle. Here, let me put this back. Yeah, overall, this is. Be careful. Don't drop it. <laughs> I should have had some stuff in my hand to make it sound like a drop. Um, but overall, it's uh, 4,080 pieces. So, and I am a little over halfway. But a lot of the pieces left are like little pieces. So, um, as we get higher, it's going to be more difficult. But overall, I think it's really cool. I like it a lot. Yeah, it's, it's, it's I think it's bigger than what most people realize it is until you actually see it. Um, and then, yeah, we got that. I got the train stations done. So, yeah, I'm slowly losing a lot of time and space to legos but i think they're really cool so it's worth it okay i think that is going to wrap up our show for tonight thank you everyone for joining us once again as always tonight's show is sponsored by it's all about the mouse travel Ling. make sure you stop by it's all about the mouse travel.com for all of your disney travel needs all their services are absolutely positively 100 percently free so make sure you book with them for your next disney vacation I'd like to thank everyone out there for joining us once again this week. Please keep spreading the word about the Wednesday show and from screen to theme and invite anyone and everyone to join the group on Facebook. Or if you have not already subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe. And if for your homework this week, I don't know, maybe you could like get like three of your friends to subscribe as well. That'd be fun. <laughs> it is national. Subscribe to Brent Dodge Day. Every year, millions do not subscribe. And it makes... The workplace of america sadder so if you want america to be a happier place make sure you get your friends to like and subscribe to brent dodge Bling. um that's a true story so, <laughs> anyways thank you everyone for joining us once again this week i hope you guys enjoyed our little recap of festival of the arts so far this year um, next year, we will be finishing up our bracket, trying to figure out who is the best Disney animal. So make sure you join us next Wednesday for that. And of course, as always, remember that, oh, or of course, if you have not ordered your copy of A Closer Look or A Closer Look or A Closer Look yet, make sure you go visit the Shop Now button at the top of this page if you're on Facebook or visit the link below if you are on YouTube. And of course, as always, remember that anything can happen if you let it have a great week everybody Bye -bye. goodbye now goodbye goodbye now goodbye are, are they are they are they gone are they gone oh good mate are just killing me you just can't stand this kind of pressure